Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the special edition of Meet the Miniaturist, you guys. Um, before I get to get into my special guests, I do want to let you guys know that I have an estate sale happening right now, um, which I will put the links in below. Um, and um, there's a preview as well of some of the tiny treasures that you can get in this estate sale that's happening. So do check that out. Um, so today we are joined by Paris Renfro from PRD Miniatures and Lisa Hicks from A Wee Bit Tiny Teeny Modern Minis. Almost, almost got that wrong. Um, they are the planning and producers of this upcoming show, the second annual international market of miniature artists, IMOMA. And I'm really excited to have you guys on today to talk about this show, to talk a little bit about the show circuit itself, and then talk about some really great concepts you have developed around this show that you're doing in Las Vegas, which is coming up in February. In February, it's from the 22nd through the 26th in Las Vegas at the Gold Coast Hotel and Casino. We're going to talk a little bit more about where it is and how you folks can get tickets and how you can book um, uh, book stay and all that kind of stuff. But but why don't we start a little maybe with you, Paris? Talk a little bit about your background in miniatures. You both are miniature artisans yourselves. Right. You got a lot on your plate having planning this this awesome event, being miniatures itself. But talk a little bit about what kind of miniatures you make, and then a little bit about how you got involved in this show. And then let's get right down to it and talk about the show. Uh, I, I, I've been involved with miniatures since I was a kid. I think a lot of people have it just, you know, playing with Hot Wheels, model cars, things like that. Um, in high school, I was really excited about the, uh, the architecture department and drafting. And they, I think it was seniors were creating a model and I was really intrigued with building a model and I didn't want to wait till I was a senior to do it. So I went to the wood shop, got some scrap, started building my own. That was my very first house. Um, since then, I had a lot of different jobs. I was really interested in the construction trade because I wanted to become an interior designer or at least a furniture maker. And so I did a lot of different crafts, a lot of different trade work. And in 2002, I moved to San Francisco with my wife and I was really uh, got in introduced to the loft market there, a lot of lofts. And that's where my style was really developed as far as doing uh, kind of industrial modern. Yeah. And I used to make models for a lot of my proposals. So that's where that started to become kind of a constant. And then in 2005, we moved back to the Midwest. I got involved with a, a, a co-op gallery and was making full-size furniture again and artwork. And then I kind of missed making the miniatures, the models. So I would kind of do that on the side as a hobby. 2008, the market crashed and my work kind of dried up as far as the full size. So I started creating um some miniature concepts again and back then we had shutterfly and flicker uh which were Sorry, where I remember those sharing so i would post the pictures as best i could to make it look like they were my full-size work because that was the issue of not having the work is how do you show people that you're still relevant and you're still making work so my thing was let me just make my models and kind of trick them yeah and, and long story short a few bloggers got a hold of it they started putting it out there hey this guy makes miniatures uh, I started getting emails and phone calls. And then my wife was like, in 2010, we finally created PRD Miniatures, created the website. And I've been doing this full time ever since. Yeah. So how did you get involved in the show circuit? And then we're going to talk a little bit about the show circuit itself and what that means. But the, the show circuit itself was, um, I came across uh, one of the Tom Bishop shows because I had met um, Dan McNeil of Architectural Etc. Library Company. So he yeah. and I, this was even before I was, this was actually all the way back to 1997. And so he and I started working on a little collaboration to do some cool die cast car displays using their architectural elements. So we created a couple of prototypes and we were going to kind of show them at a couple of the local like Ferrari shows. And then we were going to do the Barrett Jackson in, um, Arizona, in Scottsdale, Arizona. I think it, it was going to be in 2000. And unfortunately, Dan passed away of, of a heart attack before we ever got got to do any of it. And actually, that was in, uh, I think, 2001 was when he, he passed. Yeah. So that kind of shelved that. But that he was familiar with all the show circuit. And he was going to start taking some stuff to the shows. And then uh, Swan House Miniatures contacted me in, I think it was 2009. Yeah. 2010. Yeah, so you've actually been involved in the show circuit for, for quite a while. 
Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit more about your show in a second. But Lisa, tell us a little bit about your work and how you got involved in the show circuit. Oh, <clears throat> well, um, I'm I'm kind of the same as Paris. I, I actually started when I was a kid. I think I was about seven or eight years old. Um, my mom worked at a cabinet shop next door to Barbara's Miniatures, which was in Bakersfield for 49 years. Barbara owned one of six miniature shops in Bakersfield. Kern County was big with miniatures back in the day. Yeah. And I got to go next door to Barbara's every day where my mom worked at the cabinet shop. And I fell in love with them then. And unfortunately, you know, adulthood took over and having children. And I spent 19 years in real estate and decided to quit my corporate job in uh, the end of 2015 and started a wee bit teeny modern minis. Yeah. Um, in the very beginning, I was importing lighting and then um, my source dried up and I quickly had to kind of reevaluate and started becoming an artist myself and making, I've always done it, but I just never did it for my business. And then um, obviously the show circuit was one of the first things I did. My very first show was 2016 <clears throat> in uh, San Jose at the Good Sam Miniature Showcase. And I had a fantastic show, made a lot of money and yeah. realized I needed to keep doing it. So yeah. I ended up, I think in 2017 and 18, doing about 12 shows a year. It was insanity. <laughs> I dropped it down to about like seven or eight, you know, and then the mar then COVID hit and things happened. But um, uh, so yeah, I've, I've been on the show circuit for several years. I've been to every show except one. Haven't yeah. been overseas yet to any of the overseas shows. Um, and then Paris brought me into the IMOMA organization yeah. um, before they even started, you know, at the dissolution of SIMTA. Yeah. invited me in and the show was coming up right around the corner for wholesale only for our first annual. And shortly thereafter, I kind of came on board full time and started working the show with him. Yeah, so so tell me, tell me a little bit about what the show circuit is all about. Yeah. Um, for somebody who might never have been to a show, never attended a show, what is one of these miniature shows all about? And what does it consist of? The miniature shows um, that I go to all over the U.S. are basically comprised of a bunch of, you know, there's anywhere between sometimes 20 if it's a smaller show in upwards of 125, 150. Tom Bishop's being the biggest, of course, in Chicago. Um, the shows are just you know, obviously a, a ton of dealers come together. Uh, there's wholesale shows. Um, there's, you know, Aztec and Tom and us as wholesale shows where you can come as a, a new shop or an existing shop and come and purchase wholesale to continue your business. Or there is retail shows, which is what I'm talking about. And it's basically just a bunch of miniature artists like ourselves, where we sell on Shopify, we sell online, we make from our homes. Yeah. We don't have brick and mortars. Typically, there's only a few of those out there right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's mostly mom and pops, you know, just uh, all over the country. They just come together into one place, usually a hotel type ballroom or casino like I'm Oma. And we all just get together and sell miniatures and get to meet other artists. We get to um, purchase from one another, kind of get ideas and bounce things off of what yeah. each other on what's working in the marketplace today. Um, and a lot of us really help each other out behind the scenes outside of the show with our shops and with our marketing and with, you know, we just, we're all, we make a lot of friends at the show. So it kind yeah. of becomes like a community. So to, to win it. Yeah, huh? so 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 Paris, want to tell us a little bit about some of the vendors, some of the artists that might be who are going to be at the show in February? Oh, I'm terrible with names. Uh, <laughs> How about give me a range? I can tell you with all the names because she's been dealing with them personally. Yeah, well, um, tell us about some of the miniatures they might see. Lisa, go ahead with that one. What, what was the question again? Well, some of the some of the um, types of miniatures that folks will be able to see, some of the artists they'll may be able to meet. Oh, sure, with at IMOMA. Yep. Um, so the the show circuit in and of itself that I'm familiar with is typically one twelfth scale dollhouse driven miniature yeah. shows. It is very you know it's there's it's a restricted scale show circuit. Right, IMOMA right. is different. IMOMA is new era. We're trying to come with 
increasing the miniature world of inclusivity when it comes to different types of scales and different types of miniature art. Um, you know, there's um, Aragumi, there's, you know, toy miniature, there's diorama miniature, there's there's so many, there's die cast there. I could yeah. go on and on and on. Yeah, and that kind of all plays into your mini con concept, which I definitely want to get to. Let's talk a little bit about what people can expect to see at this show coming up in February. So yes. we're basically around, mostly around 12 scale, maybe some smaller scales. Most well, let me add real quick with that. Because of the whole pandemic, our first show was in 2020. The last two years has been, we get ready and then they had to cancel. We get ready and we had to cancel. So what people are going to expect to see is not quite exactly of where we're headed, which we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So right now you're still going to see a lot of the traditional dollhouse type shops, things like that. We're trying to intermix a, a few um, exciting things along with that. We're yeah. still kind of hoping that there's a couple that I'm trying to get a hold of. I don't want to mention them until, you know, we're, we're solid with them first. Yeah. But the whole idea is that down the road, you're going to start seeing things that are really cool miniature pieces of art in themselves, yeah. but not necessarily going to be something that you can put into a dollhouse. Right. Yeah. So let's so, talk a little bit about this whole idea of the Minfluencer, which I love this whole idea about bringing people into your show who are going to generate excitement, bring folks in who are just going to just love to be there. Talk a little bit about this Minfluencer program and maybe a little bit about some of the artists who might be joining as Minfluencers and what is a Minfluencer? <laughs> so the idea, first off, Lisa really brought on the whole idea of let's make this a mini con. Okay. Yeah. Originally it was just going to be we're starting a new show. We didn't want it just to be a modern show because we want to be inclusive to a lot of different genres. But the whole idea was there's so many really cool artists out there that might not go to a normal miniature show because they feel like, yeah, it's not really my thing or that I don't fit. Right. So she came up with the whole mini con thing. I'm as a uh, practice, well, I don't practice anymore, but practicing designer. Yeah. I used to go to Market Week twice a year here in Las Vegas, which is huge. I mean, hundreds of thousands of designers come from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, the amount of the, the uh, furnishings and accessories, I mean, it's, it's mind boggling if yeah. you see the size of the building, the facility. Yeah. So obviously in, in the miniature world, we're all still full size people, but I felt like, yeah why not take some of the elements of a full size show, like what, what they do there, for instance, yeah. the property brothers, they'll bring them in. They're not selling any product, but they'll be there to do a seminar. They might be at somebody's booth doing a, yeah. a signing, um, things like that. And I thought that brings an extra added element. Now we, yeah. we currently, I mean, although yourself, right. Uh, somebody who's been on a miniature design show that's been on TV, if we can get a few more of those, that'd be great to invite yeah. some of these stars to yeah. be on the show. And you would be considered an influencer because you're somebody who not only does your own miniatures or, or you know, travel the circuit, but you also yeah. have a following and you're also educating them and doing yeah. something to help further the miniature uh, collector, you know, the whole industry itself. So right. that, that's somebody who I consider to be a influencer. And I came up with the name Minfluencer because obviously influencer is so big and I feel like yeah. we're used in, in the social media world. Yeah. Uh, but for miniatures, I felt like there are specific key people who everyone either recognizes as far as a name, yeah, have a podcast of some sort, and they're instrumental in, in connecting and being a part of, it's like going to a mall and seeing um, anchor stores. So you have like yeah. a PCs or a Bloomingdale's. Without them, you just have kind of a strip mall with a bunch of little stores. Yeah. Right. Having the big anchor stores are what become the draw. Yeah. And then everyone can kind of go about their business and look for the things that they want to see. Yeah. So the are, are, there, are there some influencers that we can look forward to seeing at the show? Absolutely. We're gonna have at least five of them there. Yeah, so we have so I'm yeah. I'm big I'm big on social media. So before yeah. he came up with the term influencer, when I kind of figured we need to expand this into a mini con and be more inclusive and, and less restrictive of other types of miniatures, not that we want to exclude any era or any any current artists or dealers or brick and mortar. We want everybody to grow in the industry and get bigger. So my concept was I saw a lot of during pandemic millions and millions of new artists coming online 
yeah. brand new. I mean, people I've never met, never seen at the show. They just started their companies. They're now selling on Etsy. They're online. They're communicating. They're big on social media. They know nothing about a show circuit. So I started right. reaching out. And as these people over the last two or three years started to grow, people like um, Philip Naveen, people like Becky Gannon from um, Mad About You, people yeah. like Rachel Carp from, um, there's a lot of podcasts out there. So Rachel does her podcast and she has a subscription box. And um, Grandma Gets Real is big in the one six scale, which is Tanya. Um, yep. And then um, Jordan from Oilers Workshop is really big in the diorama scene and big with the Star Worlds world. That's great. So oh, okay. we, we have quite a few coming. Um, yeah. So Tanya, um, Grandma Gets Real. Um, <laughs> Becky of Mad About You and no, Rachel. Mad About Miniatures. Mad About You is a show. Mad, Mad About Miniatures. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mad About Miniatures. Yep. And then um, Mike Drop Miniatures is um, Rachel and Jordan is Oilers Workshop. And yeah. this is a new program. We're our first annual retail show. We did not do retail prior to this. So we are a growing concept. We yeah. are not promising the world to anybody or anything at this point. We are doing our absolute best behind the scenes to make this show a success. And when Paris says we're not where we wanna be, that doesn't mean what we wanna tell you is like, we're actually at capacity at 70 dealers right now. Yeah, and that's a, that was gonna be one of my next questions. So so there will be, be 70 dealers at this show. So 70 artisans selling their wares. Okay. Come and buy. If you're a dealer yourself, if you're a mom and pop shop, or if you sell online, you can head over to the wholesale show before the yeah. retail show starts. People can expect to meet these influencers. Is that influencers? Yeah, we're gonna have a influencer table a with every back backdrop. So and we're gonna have time so that people are gonna know exactly when they can meet them. They so have a schedule. On the website. Uh, I don't know if we have it up yet, but it will be up there with the schedule. And yeah. that you you'll know which day, which time that you can go sit down with them, chat with them, take photos with them. Some of them may have a few things that they might be selling or giving yeah. away. Um, two of them I are. Th doing I think podcasts. most of them are actually planning on bringing things to give away to yeah. their their yeah. Beautiful. So Beautiful. they'll be set up at the table for a certain time period. It's going to be in the program, and yeah. they're promoting the show prior for us. They're yeah. very eager to get the entire miniature community on board because obviously the whole goal here for everybody is to continue to grow the show circuit and not to kind of see it sort of drop out one show after another, you know? Um, and I, think, I think it sounds like you want people to have fun. Yes. And I think yes. that, that is the biggest extra added value I think that you're bringing to the show circuit. Because yeah. if folks that, who are watching, if, you know, if you've gone to shows, you've seen, you know, there's, they're, they're great. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but this whole, you know, idea of meeting your fa favorite social media personality is just yeah. makes it that much better. It's a yeah. social event because some of the other shows, some of these influencers have been at those shows, but nobody saw them because they were just busy shopping. There was nothing organized as far as, oh, who's that, you know? And a lot of times you don't really see them anyway. Some of the uh, podcasters and bloggers, sure, you get to see who they are, but right. not everyone posts themselves on there, whether that's by design or not, that's up to them. But the reality is this is the chance that you get to meet your followers, your followers get to meet you. But more importantly, many of us have the same followers. Yeah. Right. They right. also cool. follows. So now they get a chance to see three or four of their favorite, you know, artisans at a show. Yeah. Whereas before it was kind of like, well, they're they're this one's going to this show, that one's going to this show. And you know, you just it was kind of all over the place. Yeah. 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 All right, so I think you guys, I think I love what you're doing. I love the energy that you're bringing to the miniatures world. So tell us again where and when it is and how folks can get tickets and where they can secure accommodations. Talk a little bit about that. Sure, so um, the Gold Coast Hotel and Casino is a very large hotel in Las Vegas. We are off the strip. Um, it is very inexpensive room nights. I believe it's $33 with resort fees and taxes. It's like 60 bucks a night. Wow. Um, so it's very inexpensive. They've got uh, tons of restaurants in there. Pretty much everything that you need is at the hotel, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, that's the accommodation side of things. And our group code, I believe, is only good for that room rate until February 19th. So okay. they we'll pop to... that into the comment section below. What is it, though, so, so I can get that written down? Do it's... we know? You know, uh, you can send it to me afterwards and I'll pop I'll it in. I'll send it to yeah. you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you have that code. 
Yes, the group code's on our website as well. We also have, uh, I think, six workshops for adults going on, which are happening during the wholesale show, which is very key and important. If you're traveling and want to do a workshop, it is during the wholesale portion of the show. Yep. Wholesale buyers have to be screened. You do have to be a retailer with proper licensing information to get in. Um, our, uh, our wholesale, uh, our four day show, we're taking very good care of our dealers with food this year. Okay. So they will be getting breakfast, they will be getting lunch, and they will also be, uh, you said fun. We are having an entire hour and a half social networking dinner on Saturday with an open bar and live music. Um, we're going to have a blast on Saturday. Everybody's supposed to just close their tables up and head on over to our dinner area. And we're going to be serving up to 70 people in a dinner where our influencers, all of our dealers, our dealers, families, our buyers, our guests, anybody and everybody is allowed to come to the din dinner. And it's literally to just be able to get a chance to talk to one another, entertain, have a good time, get to know each other as a community, which we feel like is when you have, you know, you go to some of the other shows and it's great to get a little bite to eat here or there, but a lot yeah. of us are working. I'm physically working at the shows and I can come up and grab it and go back to my table, but I yeah. don't ever have time to really get to know my buyers. I don't really have time to get to know my dealers. So our social networking hour is exactly that. It's supposed to be fun, fun, fun. And our influencers are going to be there to kind of mingle with everybody and have a great time. Um, our tickets for our adults and children tickets uh, are available on our website at imomalv.com. Okay. I'll give you the link to that as well. And they can purchase the retail tickets. And I believe wholesale buyers are free. You don't have to pay to get in as a wholesale buyer, but there is an application process on the website. And all workshops for students registration is also on the website under workshops. Beautiful. And can folks um, drop in and pay at the table or do they have to purchase beforehand? Absolutely. You can drop in if you're, I don't believe you can drop in as a wholesale buyer, but you can drop in as a retail buyer. You do have to pre-register as a wholesale buyer because it is a process to get you that badge to be able to get into the show. Beautiful. That is yeah. just awesome. You guys, I am just so thrilled by everything that you guys are doing and I can't wait I mean I can't go to the show this year I'm probably gonna make it next year but I want folks to get definitely head over to your website to check out the show maybe book tickets now in advance get your flights going I think I love what you're bringing to the table I uh, the excitement the the you know just all of the fun it's just it's just awesome and I want to thank you guys for just being here today it's been awesome awesome I would talk add one more thing is it's not yeah. just and myself there's also Cindy Gonzalez and then her yeah. son Jeremy also helps us out just want to clear that up that Good we point. Have Good point. all right great thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your day all right you too thanks Darren. all right bye